Alright guys, so uh, this is the Orion Sky Quest XT8 Plus. So, any of my uh, other videos where you, you see uh, photographs and pictures that I've taken is going to be through uh, this telescope. It's an 8 inch Dobsonian, and uh, let's check it out. So, the 8 in XT8 stands for the size of the aperture. So, this is an 8 inch uh, aperture Dobsonian. So, as you can see, it's, it's pretty large. You can get bigger, uh, but this is a, a good size. You're going to grab a lot of light with an 8 inch. It has a, uh, a 1200 millimeter focal length, so it's going to pair up great with uh, many different eyepieces, different sized eyepieces. Uh, so, one big upgrade on the uh, the XT8 Plus over the Classic is uh, these tensioning knobs. So it is a Dobsonian base, so this is the way it moves. It spins on the base down below. Uh, so it, the, the Plus comes with these tensioning knobs with a Teflon bearing, so you can adjust the tension on the scope in case you added heavier eyepieces or finder scope. You can adjust it so that the scope still moves slowly. The Classic has spring tension, which they haven't had too many troubles, but you can adjust. You cannot adjust the, uh, the tension on the Classic version. So speaking of uh, the finder scope, um, it just was. I have upgraded my finder scope on this. Uh, the scope that this, uh, the finder scope that this comes with, is um, Orion Easy Finder Two. Uh, it's a laser. It's not really a laser, but it's a red dot, and uh, I found this to be pretty crappy. Mine didn't even really work that well. Uh, it just came, it kind of like the light came on and off on it, and uh, it's a little bit of a pain. You have to get back right here and look straight. You have to like look straight through here, so you're <clears throat> crouching down over, and there's no magnification with it, so finding deep uh, space objects is a little trickier with this thing. It, they, they can be pretty accurate if you have the red dot uh, aligned pinpoint properly. They can be accurate but I would highly recommend uh, upgrading so which I did so I went with a, uh, a 9x50 uh, oh, this is actually an Orion uh, finder scope. They have a, a dovetail mount that they that they use so you you either need to get an adapter or you need to buy uh, an Orion made finder scope in order to, to have it fit properly. Now this finder scope uh, is perfect. It's crystal clear. Uh, it has good magnification. Like it says 9 by 50 so it's almost as if you have a pair of 10 by 50 binoculars it's almost as uh, powerful as that. So you can you can make out some you know you can find deeper things than with zero magnification. So basically you know you're gonna line this up with your scope, and you're gonna and you're gonna see them in here. Um, the focuser is a dual focus, so you have your your main knob here, and then for very fine focus, you have right here. Um, is a two inch. Hold on, let's see what we got here. So it takes two inch eye pieces. So it comes with a 28 millimeter. Which is actually, I find it pretty nice. Actually, it's pretty, it's very clear, and it's, it's the, actually the wide field of view that you get with this 28 uh, combined with the the focal length and the size of the aperture is a very wide field of view, and it's very clear. Uh, it also has an adapter, so you can use one and a quarter inch uh, eyepieces with it, and it does come with. <clears throat> it comes with a 10 millimeter plausel, which I find I also find that eyepiece is very good, and it comes with a 2x <clears throat> Barlow. So what this is going to do is it's going to turn your 10 millimeter into a 5 millimeter, basically. So you're going to get the magnification of a 5 millimeter, and of course magnification is all relevant <clears throat> compared to your, your magnification is going to be your focal length of your telescope divided by the the focal length of your eyepiece. So a 10 millimeter in this telescope is going to be 120 X. Which is, when you're looking at deep space things, like uh, it's kind of, it's better to have, 
you don't really want to be zoomed right in on those things. You get a much better view with a uh, with a wide field of view and a very clear field of view. Uh, the tube is is a steel. Um, it's blue. This one's blue. The classic is black. All the classics are black. You can also get this in uh, in telescope, so it has a. You can rig them up, and you can just put the coordinates in, and uh, it'll find everything for you. I'm not so much into that. It's more they're more expensive, and uh, I find you know I kind of enjoy trying to learn the night sky a bit, and learn the constellations, and learn where to find the Messier objects, and things like that. I find that interesting. Um, Again, there. Also, it was with a collimation cap. So, collimation cap, maybe I'll make a separate video on that because it can be a little tricky first. Uh, basically, you'll pop this out and you'll pop this collimation cap in there. You'll take this off. There's lots of videos on collimating. I may do a separate one, but you can. That's all you need. All you need is this cap that it comes with. You don't really need to buy like a laser collimator. Uh, this is this is plenty. You can get a dead dead center with that. Um, another thing about uh, these telescopes and Orion, the uh, they have uh, they have great customer service. Uh, I've had I've dealt with them a few times before in the past, and they're just like fantastic. They they handle all your every if you have any complaints or issues, they uh, they'll see to it that it gets uh, sorted out and you're happy with everything. In the end. Trick with uh, with these Newtonium reflectors and I guess reflectors probably in general, <clears throat> especially if you live somewhere where it's cool with a cool climate, like I do, uh, you really need to let them sit them outside for 30 minutes, 45 minutes even an hour if you can uh, before you go out and use them. Like, it's going to make a huge difference. Uh, it really does. You might not think, and it's not even to do with fogging, with steaming up of the mirrors because I've seen the mirrors look clear but you still don't get a good image. It's actually the heat, the heat inside the telescope when you move it out affects the, the light rays coming in and uh, it distorts the image. So if the mirror is, is still warmer than the ambient temperature, uh, you're not going to get a clear picture. Uh, one other thing too that I read, uh, because Jupiter was kind of just coming up over my garage, I was check looking through and I could not get Jupiter to focus. And uh, one thing that I have read that you shouldn't view uh, over the top of, roof, of a roof or a black shingled roof because it still has heat from the daytime unless it has time to cool down. So the heat from the garage roof was rising up and interfering with my image of Jupiter. Um, that said, once I sorted all that out, Jupiter was crystal clear. Even with the, with the 28 millimeter, uh, the two inch 28 millimeter, you could see the, you could, ju you could see the bands on Jupiter. Um, they were small, but it's a wide field of view. It's, the telescope was more aimed towards deep space viewing. Uh, the moon looks amazing in it um, because of the, the aperture. Uh, if you have a smaller telescope and you can have the same size eyepiece because viewing is all about the aperture and the focal length is, uh, is, is what it's all about. It's not so much the magnification. So if you have a 10 millimeter, okay, so I have a 10, mil 10 millimeter in this looks way better than a 10 millimeter in. Uh, you may, my, my other video, my first telescope was the uh, the Celest Celestron Power Seeker uh, ADAZS. So it still looks decent in that too for a beginner scope, but with the same size eyepiece in this, it looks like it looks way better. So uh, if you if you're looking to get like a second scope, and you're upgrading from your your first scope, or I would highly recommend this an eight inch. You might as well go for an eight if you can afford it. A six is probably pretty good too, but you might as well go for that eight. Because uh, you're you're going to be happy with an eight inch, and it could it could be your last year of your lifetime. You may never need to go any bigger than that. Uh, I'm sure a ten inch would be really nice, but uh, but eight inch is just is uh, fantastic. It's, it kind of hits the sweet spot. Um, so that's my uh, that's my opinion on this on this scope. And thanks for checking out, guys. We'll catch you later.